Hello, welcome to Zigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for geography. For this class, we are going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed in your device, I will want you to download the app in order to follow along in this class. Exam Guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare adequately for various exams like UTME, Post-UTME, WIEC, GCE, KCPE, IJMB, JUPEB, Carbopedia, BECE, JSCE, NCE, NECO, etc. You can download the app from www.examguide.com or Google Play Store. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell to be updated on new videos. Ready for today's class? Okay, let's get started. So, in today's lesson, we will be considering the topic that says local geography, town and village. And um, in this lesson, we are going to look at the definition of local geography. We are going to identify the physical and cultural features that we can find in a town and a village. And then we are also going to try to locate um, the physical and cultural features based on our school environment or based on our surroundings. And we are also going to describe the influence of physical and cultural features on the town and village. And the, that is the influence they have on the um, human activities. So um, before we, um, we go ahead, now if you look at your immediate environment, there are actually two um, um, types, or let's say two categories of um, settlements that you will see. The first one is usually a developed kind of um, settlement. The second one is actually less developed. And um, you know, when you go here, you see tall buildings, you see cars, you see um, businesses um, going and uh, moving on. And if you go to this other one, you're seeing bushes, you're seeing uh, mud houses or less developed houses and infrastructure. Now, um, all these things that you see here and there are actually what we call our immediate environment. And in geography, we refer to it as local geography. So what is local geography? Local geography is actually a terminology or will I say a term that we use to, you know, mean the study of the physical and cultural features of our immediate environment. So it, it, it means that in local geography, we are actually studying about the physical features or the um, cultural features we have in the environment you know, surrounding us. So we study the, um, the structure, uh, the physical structure, we study the um, landscape, we study the man-made um, structures we have around us and um, just anything you know that we can see in our immediate environment is covered under the aspects of local geography so in local geography when we say locality we are actually talking about our villages our towns our local government areas and our states so our, our locality refers to this. And um, in this class for today, we'll consider um, the first two, which is the villages and the towns. Now we're going to look at how um, one differs from the other and um, what this other settlement is and what this other settlement is. So um, let's consider the first one, which is a village. Now, uh, a village, actually, before I go into my discussion, but uh, I'll say a village is seen as a small, a very small nucleated rural settlement, meaning that uh, when I use the word um, small and nucleated, I actually mean that the number of buildings you can find there is very small. And it's nucleated in the sense that the buildings are actually clustered together and it's not a developed settlement. So we say a village is a small nucleated um, rural settlement and it is made up of the combination of two or more hamlets. Hamlets are actually smaller versions of a village. A village is a, a, a settlement uh, structure that is composed of um, two or more um, farmstead or homestead 
and the village has a population consisting from uh, several hundred um, persons to uh, or persons or buildings to a thousands of persons or buildings you know and um, a village lacks um, social amenities that is just one um, downside of a village they lack social amenities like good roads you know sometimes they lack um, things like pipe bone water they lack things like electricity so as you can see on your screen that's um, a typical example of what a village is so we look at the opposite or will i say the other type of settlement which is called a town a town is um, in contrast to the village a town is a nucleated urban settlement that's very large now a town is actually gotten from um, two or more villages that have developed over a long period of Time. So when we have um, a developed village merged together, it helps us to, uh, to get a town. So it means that a village is as a result of a town. Uh, a, a town is as a result of a village that has developed for a very long time. And also, a town contains more buildings compared to a village. A town contains several hundreds or thousands of buildings with people living in them. So we have tens of thousands of buildings in in a in, a, in, a, in an urban town. And um, in a town, we have most um, social uh, amenities that we need, like um, electricity, like transportation network, like health facilities, and also pipe bond water. So what are the physical features we can see in a village? Now, when they say physical features, we're talking about the physical, uh, the natural, or ma uh, natural features that we can um, see anytime we get to a particular village now the first one is relief first of first and foremost what is relief relief is simply the height of a place above sea level now if you in nigeria here um, if you go to different villages we have different types of relief now considering the fact that um, nigeria has highlands and lowlands it means that the villages in these places will have a different type of relief system now if you go to places like um, the just plateau the uh, the western highlands and the eastern highlands and the north central highlands you score that villages there they have a relief that is located that they have a settlement that is located on the high relief what i'm trying to say is that these villages are actually located on highlands and these highlands are actually plateau you know um, flat um, table land plateaus so villages in these places in nigeria they are actually found on a highland relief but if you go to places in the south like the niger delta and the um, river niger benway flood plain um, basin you see that villages that we have in these places they have um, they're actually located on a on lowlands which means that the relief of these places are actually what actually low then if we talk about the vegetation of um, vegetation and um, and climate you discover that um a village in the south are actually found in the equatorial zone or will I say the rainforest zone but if you go to the northern part of Nigeria the, the, the villages there are actually found in the savanna or a grassland zone and same as the climate the climate there is very harsh in the north and in the southwest and um, east we, also, we have a climate that is conducive with heavy rainfall and, um, and high um, temperature during the year then for drainage we have um, river body uh, bodies like um, um, river niger river benue imo river kaduna river um, rima and the rest we have them flowing through most of the villages that we have in nigeria so let's look at the socio sociocultural features or will i say um, the human or the man-made features that you can actually see in a village now when you go to a village what are the things you can see number one thing you can see is a village market we can see schools there we also see settlements you know less developed settlements or let's say less developed buildings where people are living we also have um, churches we have um, villages um, villages hall there we have um, roads we have bridges we have footpaths and lots of other man-made structure that we can find in the village. 
Now, heading to a town, we have the physical and the um, cultural features in a town too. Now, what are the physical features that we can see in a town? Now, if you go to a town, a town can actually be in a highland relief or a lowland relief. Like I, I said previously concerning the village, if a town is located in places where we have uh, a plateau, it definitely means that the relief of that place will be what? Will be that of a highland. So places like just places like um, um, the North Central in Kano and Sokoto and the rest, some of, so, there are some places there that are actually located on a highland. That means they, they have towns, developed towns, found on a highland area or let's say plateau area. Take for instance the uh, capital of uh, Plateau State, Joss. Joss is actually a town that is found on a highland um, terrain. Then we have uh, that of vegetation. Now, when I talk about vegetation, I'm talking about the plant features. Now, if you head um, down to the south of Nigeria, the vegetation there is evergreen due to the presence of rain. And then, um, you know, we have a, a very nice um, rainforest. I also have the mango swamp here in the south and in the east, the eastern part of Nigeria. Now, the vegetation in towns around here is quite different from the ones we have in the north. Same as the climate. The climate um, up there is harsh, with, they have less rainfall. Here we have more rainfall in the south and the east, eastern part of Nigeria, also in the western part of Nigeria. So the climate in some of these towns differ uh, around Nigeria. And in terms of drainage, we have um, some places where, some towns where we actually have rivers flowing through. Take for instance, Kogi State, Lokoja to be precise, Lokoja town in Kogi State. Lokoja is a confluence town, meaning that if you go there, they have um, River Niger, River Benue, you know, flowing through that um, town. So we have towns where there is a, what, a drainage flowing in it. So what are the, you know, human or man-made features that we can see in a town? Now, if you go to a town, you know, it's different from the village compared to its um, complexity. Now, in a town, per se, we have buildings, large buildings like um, banks, commercial banks to be precise, and uh, mortgage, mortgage banks. We also have schools, and um, when I say schools, I'm talking about um, bigger schools like universities, you know, um, college of education, polytechnics, monotechnics, and um, other specialized um, schools. We have supermarkets in a town, we have a police station, we have flyovers, we have churches, we have mocks, you know, we have different, you know, you know type of um, settlements that can be found in um, a town compared to a village where we have less of this. And in terms of infrastructure and um, social amenities, when you go to a town, we have good roads in a town, we have good electricity or, or more stable electricity compared to a village. We have pipe bone water or a good source of water. We have a stadium where you can go watch football or where you can partake in any you know, sports activities. We have um, civic centers, we have viewing centers in a town. We have um, health facilities, you know, good health uh, or let's say medical facilities like you know, good hospitals. And we also have um, other basic amenities. And not forgetting the uh, markets, you know, huge markets that we have in a town. So if I want to, you know, actually get direction, you know, and location of physical features or cultural features in a town or the village, and I'm in a school or a particular place, now what are the steps that I can actually take. Now, the first thing is this. If you want to actually locate a physical feature or in a particular town or village or a, a cultural feature, okay, let's use a cultural feature, for instance. I want to locate, um, let's say, I want to locate um, Zenith Bank. And Zenith Bank is around uh, my settlement. And I'm in my school, for instance. Now, what I will do is this. The first thing is this. I will draw a sketch map of my town, you know, and show my observation 
point. Maybe if, since I'm in the school, I'll use my observation point as a school. And from there, I will start to measure or estimate the distance because it's very difficult measuring the distance. I will estimate the distance. And when I estimate that distance, you know, from my school to where I want to actually go, I will estimate it and record that distance. So I'll take note of the distance, um, the value of the distance or how, how long it will take to get there. And aside doing that, I will also you know, try to get, you know, the behaving of that place uh, from my school. What I, when I say behaving, I'm talking about direction. So I'll try to, you know, estimate the, or calculate the direction from my school to that place. And um, when I'm doing that, I can actually make use of a compass. Um, yes, or I make use of a compass, be it an analog or a, a digital compass. And a compass actually is a device like this that actually has cardinal points. And a compass has uh, four major cardinal points, which is the north, the south, the dot, the south, the east, and the west. So the compass will help to give you direction when you're actually trying to locate a place. So in between the north, south, east, and west, we have uh, other a subsidiary cardinal points in between. In between north and um, east, we have the northeast. In between south and east, we have the southeast. In between west and south, we have the southwest. In between north and west, we have the northwest. So those are the four minor cardinal points we have. And um, with the help of this um, compass, we can actually get the bearing or the direction of um, Zenith Bank from my school. So after doing that, I can easily what walk down to Zenith Bank using that distance or direction. So that's actual. That's how uh, you can locate physical features you have in your environment or cultural features in your environment, making use of your sketch map and your compass. So let's look at the functions of a village and that of a town. But first, we start with the village. Now. The village has its own functions and also can influence um, human activities. So while I am listing out the uh, functions of the village, I'm going to also state how it can influence human activities in any part of um, the village or even the town. So we start with the first. The first uh, function of a village is that village provides foodstuff. Now, why I said uh, provision of foodstuff is that when you go to a village, the, the village actually, you know, engages in majorly primary activities. And when I say primary activities, I'm talking about activities that, you know, involve man, you know, getting uh, benefits from the earth's surface. Now, primary activities include things like um, fishing, like farming, like mining, you know, these are called primary activities. So, with primary activities like um, um, agriculture, you know, farming, you can actually get foodstuffs that you can easily um, use in the village or you can even sell them to people living in the town or any urban center. So that's how the village can influence, you know, activities within its um, environs or in the town. And also raw materials, you know, that are gotten from these primary activities are made available in the village. Things like um, if I uh, like cassava, cassava is a raw material we use for you know producing gari and other um, essential commodities. You know, um, cassava can be gotten from the village, you know, and exported to the town, you know, for processing into finished products. So the village therefore supplies what raw materials towards to the town and not just the town but also to people in the village that is in need of it and when it comes to labor we have what supply of labor that's one thing a village can do a village can supply labor to people in the um, companies or organizations in the town and the village carries out, uh, carry out small uh, scale commercial function you also have hunting fishing and lumbering, which are also primary activities, 
going on in the village. Then we have religious function like uh, we have a church in the village, we also have a mosque in the village and also some traditional um, institutions in the village. And in the village we, we can as well have resort centers because we have lots of natural features in the village like uh, river, mountains or you know um, any other physical feature where people can visit. Let's take for instance the um, Obudukato Ranch for instance. That place is actually less developed but people go there for as, um, as a means of you know relaxing themselves or as a means of vacation. You know these are called resource centers because they just go there to you know appreciate uh, nature for what it is. So the, 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 the functions, like I've said, are food source production, raw material production, supply of labor, they have small co uh, scale commercial functions like small markets in the village. We have primary activities like hunting, fishing and lumbering in the village. We also have churches and mocks in the villages and we also have some resort centers for tourism, you know, found in some villages. Now, what are the functions of a town and how can a town influence human activities? Now, the first one is called the industrial function. So, when the raw materials are gotten possibly from the village or any rural center, the raw material is actually processed in the industries we have in the town. So, the town carries out uh, some industrial function and as a result of that, they need um, labor from the village too. So the second um, function of a town is the, 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 the function of employment. Town employs people. That's why you see people traveling from the village to town in search of a good job they can do. So we have employment functions in the town and we as well have administrative functions in the sense that the uh, government agencies or government buildings and power state house are not found in the village, but they are found in the town. So we have things like um, headquarters, things like Ministry of uh, Agriculture, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of all, all the government ministries are actually found in the town. So the town carries out administrative functions. The town also carries out social functions where you can, you know, go to places and relax yourself. Like um, take for instance. Um, um, the pleasure park we have in Port Harcourt in River State, um, the um, Lekki Bar Beach we have in Lagos. These are places where you can go and carry out some social functions, where you can go and interact with your friends or people of like interest with you. And in the town, we also have residential functions in a town where people live in a town, people you know live in estates, people live in. Um, in houses, on the land, people live in, um, you know, in different places that we have around the town. So the town can also, you know, serve the purpose of re uh, residence. And we have commercial functions. And the commercial functions in the town is much more, you know, bigger and complex compared to that of the uh, village. Because in the village we have a small scale commercial function. But for the town, a commercial function is on a bigger scale. Things like buying and selling, markets, you know, supermarkets, you know, uh, wholesale and retail buying are all made possible in the town. There, and um, we have the mining function too. Um, all, uh, we, we can as well mine in the town. You know, that we have places that we call mining towns, places in the town that are rich in um, natural resources like food oil, natural resources like um, coal, like tin and copper, you know, these resources are actually mined. So the town can as well carry out some mining function. And in towns or where we have um, rivers, we also carry out some fishing function. Let's take, for instance, the um, Lokoja town, for, to be precise. If you go to Lokoja town, you as well see people carrying out um, fishing activities, or you go to Ibn or, or Eket in Akwaibon State, you can also see um, some fishing activities going on. So in a town, there is what? There, is, um, there are fishing activities going on. So a town can perform fishing functions. Now, let's look at the characteristics and differences between a town and a village. We'll look at the characteristics of each of them. And um, one thing is that, their features or characteristics 
is always in contrast with one another. So let's start with a town. Now, the first one is that a town is usually large and nucleated, and it's an urban settlement. A town is large, nucleated, and urban. So we can say a town is a large, nucleated, urban settlement, but a village is a small, nucleated, rural settlement. So a village is smaller compared to a town. And um, a town occupies a large area of land due to the nature of the settlement, but a village usually occupies a small area of land with the rest remaining for agricultural activities. A, the population of a town is high, is usually above 2,000 people, but um, for a village, the population most times is less than 2,000 people. Then we talk about the nature of the population. If you go to uh, a town, we have um, a heterogeneous population. Now, why I say heterogeneous is that in a town, you see people you know, from different sociocultural backgrounds. You, it's in a town where you see a Yoruba man, it's, it's in a, and in that same town, you see an Igbo man, in that same town, you see someone from Urubo, and in that same town, you see someone from, um, from Fulani, or someone from Hausa, or someone from Efik or Ibibio. So a town accommodates people from different you know, cultural background. But if you go to a village, most times the population, uh, the population of people in a village is usually homogeneous. That's why in villages you have, um, you have them make use of their you know, um, indigenous language fluently all through the village because the, um, the type of people living there are usually from that you know, social bag uh, sociocultural background. So that is one difference between um, the um, town and the village. So let's look at the next um, difference between a town and a village. Um, in a town, we have lots of infrastructure, like I said previously. We have um, good roads. We have big buildings. We have good power supply. We have good um, water supply. You know, these things are actually provided more in the town compared to the village. But if, if you check the village, you see that the infrastructure and social amenities there are very what are very less or, or fewer in numbers. That's to say that the town has abundance of um, social amenities and infrastructure, while the village has less of it or the village lacks in, in this world, in this area. Then we go to the next one. Um, the type of activity they do. Now, if you go to the village, the village, they actually engage in primary activities. Why the town engages in secondary or tertiary activities? Now, if you go to the village, you, the dominant type of occupation you will see there are primary activities like, uh, like farming, like um, fishing, like lumbering. You know, so we have more farmers in the village, we have more of um, lumbers in the village, we have more of um, fishermen in the, in the village. But if you go to, uh, let's say you go to a town, let me give an instance, let's say um, Ikeja, for instance. In Ikeja town, we have um, primary, secondary and tertiary activities there. Now, let me give an instance of the type of activity you see there. Now, if you go there, you're going to see lots of banks, like commercial banks. You're going to see lots of construction companies. You're going to see lots of manufacturing companies in Ikeja. You're going to see lots of um, transportation companies in Ikeja. And you're going to see lots of tertiary activities, like schools and the rest, in Ikeja. So these um, towns we have in the urban settlements, they have diverse um, secondary and tertiary activities going on compared to the village where we have less, uh, less of these activities. So these are the um, characteristics and as well the differences between a village and a town. Now let's continue further. Now when you look at a town, they, we have modernized buildings. You know, the buildings are complex 
in nature. But if you go to a village, you have a less, you know, or a low quality type of buildings there that are less um, organized and less modernized. You see thatch house, slums, and um, you know, shanties, makeshift buildings, and the rest in, uh, in a village. And also, a town is prone to environmental pollution due to the diverse um, secondary activities we have going on there. But if you go to a village, the, uh, the climate is usually clean and clear. That is, the atmosphere is very clean and clear, and is free from pollution. And lastly, a town is easily accessible while a village is not accessible. That means that you can easily um, get um, direction to a town compared to a village. And this is due to the fact that in a town, we have um, good roads and um, you know, good um, um, structures in place to direct you to your location compared to a village where we have bad roads and sometimes you get to use other modes of transport aside the road transport. So um, these are the um, characteristics and differences that we have between a town and a village. And um, let's just quickly um, head straight to the exam guide app and attempt um, a few questions we have concerning a town and a village. Okay, so this is a question from um, the exam guide app. And um, the question goes like this. It says, the main difference between town and village is that A, villages has more food storage facility. B, village has more occupations. C, town performs more tertiary function. And D, town has more unqualified workers. Now, if you look at the options given, you discover that um, the first one is off the mark because when we say a village has a more food storage facilities, it's actually um, wrong because the village, the town is more sophisticated than the village. So the town should have better facilities for storing um, things that they import or things they produce. Now, if you look at the second option, it says village has more occupation. Now, uh, the uh, occupation that is dominant in the village is um, that of the primary activities like fishing and lumber. So therefore, the option B is not correct. And um, if you look at the last option, which is unqualified workers, it's also wrong because the village has, uh, can supply labor to the town. So the correct answer here is what is option C. And it says what? the town performs more tertiary functions compared to the village because um, tertiary functions like banking, you know, education and the rest are actually common in the town when you compare it to the village. So the answer is C. All right, let's look at uh, a theoretical question using the exam guide app. Now, the question goes like this. It says, in what four ways does a town differ from a village? In what four ways does a town differ from a village? So this question is actually asking you the difference between a town and a village. How is a town different from a village? Now, the first, remember I told you that in a town, the population is heterogeneous, meaning that we have different cultural backgrounds there. That's number one. Why that of a village is homogeneous? Now, a town is um, easily accessible, but a village is not accessible. A town has a population of over 2,000 people, but in a village, we have a population less than 2,000 people. And um, the buildings in a town are modernized, but that of a village is not modernized compared to a town. So these are, these are just um, some of the um, differences we have between a village and a town. So let's look at the next question. The next question says, with examples, describe four functions which a village may perform for a town. Now, the first function is provision of what? Of food. 
food supply. So in a town, for instance, a town um, in a village, um, we, we can produce things like cassava. So you can use the example cassava or yam. So cassava is being um, um, uh, manufactured or let's say planted in the, um, in the village. And when it's uh, harvested, it's sent to the town to, uh, to be sold. So that first one is provision of um, food. Then we have provision of raw materials owing to the fact that we have primary activities dominant in the uh, village. So a village will provide raw materials for the town. And also, a village will as well uh, provide labor, you know, supplies labor for, labor for the town. So when you, we have workers going from the village towards to the town in search of what? In search of um, pastures or in search of what they can use to, what, to survive. So these are, you know, some of the functions that a village can perform for the town. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has other features that make learning fun. It's a must have for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the videos to people that will benefit from it. Bye.